what I'm doing is just trying to rough layer up my other layers now. So instead of getting a perfectly clean cutout on everything right now, what matters more is getting just things roughly placed. So my next layer, I can get rid of my smart objects now as I'm doing the kind of final placement. My next layer was this. I take it up to 100% opacity. And before I cut anything out, I'm going to play with those direct adjustments, starting with levels, playing with the midtone slider. Because it's a nighttime scene, I'm going to push that those midtones a little bit darker. And I might even limit the highlights just a bit. Then I'm going to next, after levels, I do color balance. Big change here from kind of orange to more blues. But also the foreground's going to get warmer and I'm more into the middle ground now. So I can be less afraid of it having more color. So I'm going to start with the midtones and go to the shadows. Make those cooler. And then go to the highlights and maybe warm those up just a little bit, but they're already so warm. And then big difference between before I did the levels, right? And then after. And then the last one is hue saturation. The intensity, I don't think I need any more intensity here. And I don't need to shift the hues wildly. But I'm getting these kind of strange color effects on these mountains, which is what I wanted for this surreal mountain range. And then if I wanted to cut these out more cleanly, which I'll need to by the end, I can use a combination of the magic wand with contiguous turned on. And you can see it kind of does okay. And delete. And then if I wanted to feather, I go to select and mask, and it will remember my settings, and I say okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> and then when I delete, it will give me this little soft-edged transition, but sometimes it will leave a little ghost behind. So the cleanest way is to use my lasso with my one-pixel feather, and to just... Just cut it. But in the middle ground, it's a little bit different than just cutting this, the mountains away from the sky because now I want to start being able to transition this element into this element, right? And I can do that with a new tool, which is my eraser tool. So one of your best tools for this project, I'm just going to use a basic eraser. I'm not going to use my custom one. So just, I like to use a soft round pressure size. So that means you're using your tablet and it will be pressure sensitive to size. And I'm going to do it at 100% opacity. And I'm going to make that eraser nice and large with a hardness of zero. So it's very soft, but check this out. It will slowly blend between these layers. I don't want it to erase the mountain though, right? But it's like mist falling away at the base of these mountains. So this is a very, very helpful tool. Some of the pixels are from one layer, some are from the other. You don't need to really know which is which. So if I try that here, I can just kind of immediately start to blend some of that away. And as, as long as I get rid of the hard edge with this 100% soft eraser, you can see that on this layer too, I can start blending it with the sky. So it's not always about just 
cutting it out completely. This is a way it's different than traditional collage. Because then I can switch to a lower opacity eraser, like to 50%, and then transition it where the, the pixels from both layers are impacting each other. So we talked about the lasso tool, now we're talking about the eraser tool. But before I get into really fine selections here or changes, I'm still just trying to rough place everything. And then color correct. So I'll quickly use the lasso, get rid of this. And then I'll, I'll clean it up next time. Okay, and now the next element. I can get rid of that smart object. Take this up to 100%. And then I need to use my blending mode. Start with levels. This seems like a pretty good level. I want it kind of brighter. This is catching that moonlight. So I don't need to mess with the levels too much. Then adjustments. The next is color balance. And I'm just going to shift it away from the magentas a tiny bit and a little bit towards the blues, but not much. In the midtones. The highlights, I'm going to push it warmer. And the shadows. Sometimes you just need very subtle shifts to help things blend. Now I'm going to use magic wand. Hold down shift. Get rid of a lot of this ocean. And then I can use Select and Mask, OK, to soften that selection a little bit. And it will give me you know, little ghosts that then I can go in with my lasso and refine. Sometimes Select and Mask can make things too, too soft. There's a difference between foreground and, and middle ground and background. So this gives me stuff to clean up next time. But you see how it's starting to work in my surreal desert. And if any time I'm worried about my composition, I can always turn on my guides and see Okay, next comes this big guy. And this is a very good candidate for the magic wand. At least for all those blues to cut out nice and sharp. And now, levels, maybe brighten it up a little bit, maybe limit the highlights a little bit, deepen the shadows, no, not really. And then color balance, this should be fun. I can really change the color of this thing, make it kind of work with the environment.
subtle shifts. Started that way, now this. And then my final element. Another really good candidate for the magic wand. And then playing with direct adjustments. Now the problem with this one is this lighting direction is so different, right? That I need really need to brighten it up to kind of catch that moonlight in a way that's believable. And now color balance is going to make a big difference. And then that's a good place to be for next class. I've got things roughly placed. So the last thing I'm going to do is just crop a little bit to save some memory because I don't need all this extra working space anymore. I'm going to play with the saturation a little bit because I like these kind of bands of color and I want to bring those out. You can even play with the hue. Yeah, let's make it a little wilder. Okay. So, I'm going to use the crop tool. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to go all the way to my guides. I'm not that confident yet. I'm just going to go right outside of it to here. This is where I am so far, right? And then I'm going to hit return. And that will save a lot of memory for those extra pixels. I also deleted all of my smart layers. So I don't need those anymore except for my background layer. So I haven't rasterized that yet. And now I'm going to save by hitting File, Save, or Command S. And then I want to make sure I know where that file is. It's on my desktop. And I want to move that into my folder. And then the other thing I want to do is say file, save as, and I can say save to cloud documents. This will save it to your Adobe account. And this is good to do for your projects, your assignments. So saving it that way, if you hit home, it will show up there as a PSDC file, which means a Photoshop document cloud file. So always saving in two places. Then I am also saving it onto my portable drive. So I plug in my thumb drive to the back of the computer carefully, not loosening any cords. And then I just drag and drop my disk image right onto my backup disk, which already has a copy of it, right? But by dropping the new one on, I can say merge them, and then it will update with any newer files. And then that's it. So then we'll work next class.